Hey everybody, it's Dave Dugdale. I'm gonna be installing a Wise Cam. This is a very popular camera. It's only like 25 bucks, 20 bucks. Um, what it comes with is basically this power adapter. It comes with the cable, but I bought an extra long cable. It's 10 foot. I'll put the links to everything down below. And we got a mounting plate. So this mounting plate will go under the eave and it comes with screws. Now a lot of people have already done reviews on these in terms of uh, how to set them up. And I've already set this one up. Not only do I want to do that, but what you don't see a lot of people do is installing them. Uh, might give you ideas. Your construction in your house might be different, um, but basically in the eave structure, which you're going to see here in a second, um, I think this will last just fine. It won't get too terribly wet, although this is the west side of the house and that's where most of my weather comes from. So we'll see. Maybe I'll do a, a video in about a year to tell you if it's still going. They're only 20 bucks, so I could buy a housing for it or just buy another one. <laughs> the housing is probably just as much as the camera. So I want to mount this power right to here. Um, but I don't want the cord going up here to the eave uh, along the pegboard, so I want to put it back behind. So I'm going to take the plate off first and see what's behind there, see if I can snake that cable up through there. So I have got to get this up through there, and there's not enough room, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole with this particular um, width into the pegboard. Maybe somewhere around here. Yeah. All right, I need to make that bigger because I picked the wrong side. Whoops. <laughs> like I said, I'm not an expert. Let's make it bigger. <laughs> use, some, use the wrong tool for this problem. All right. So that fits through. So now is the hard part. This side and dangle it down. All right, so I used some tent poles and I went in there and I pulled it. And now all I have to do is just get this through here and we've got it. All right, so I'm gonna take these little blue uh, things you can buy from the hardware store. At least I bought these years ago. They're great for uh, holding the cables in place. And I'm just going to tack a few in, um, taking up some slack. I'm trying to stay away from the AC power a little bit. Alright, so here comes the big problem. Is I can't take this and drill down because of the up here. I can't get it at an angle to go straight down where I want it. Alright, I know this stud is right here from inside, so I just want to be on this side of it. And this is hollow. And I want to mount the camera about right here. So I want the cable just to come right out and go right in. So I'm just going to go maybe an inch or so off. Because I want to keep the camera away from the rain as much as possible. So let's say, let's say right here. Now I chose this drill bit because it's big enough for the, the little uh, tip to go through. Now at this point you might be thinking, boy this guy's stupid because now how is he going to get it down from there if he can't see it? Alright, so now i got to get this little tip down into here. Alright, so I couldn't find where the hole was so I put one of my tent stakes up and just put a piece of tape on it. And now when I go around the other side I'll be able to find it really easy. Alright, now I found the tent so now I'm going to push it through and you'll see it come out the other end. All right, now here's the plate I'm gonna mount up here, and it's got these two uh, kind of fins on the side that allows you to clip it in, and then these are kind of like releases on the side to when you want to take it out. Uh, I want to get it as close to here as possible. Let's get the 
camera. All right, so this camera has got a 32 gig card. It actually goes in right there. You can see it. And it'll record for 14 days. The beauty thing about this is you don't have to pay for uh, like the ring doorbell, $3 a month. It's totally free, it goes into the cloud, so you can check on anything from anywhere in the world with your phone, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and connect the power. This USB port back here, I think it's the big one is for setting it up, but I didn't need to do it that way. Um, this one is keyed, and it looks like the big side goes there. This 10 foot cable that I bought from Amazon barely fits into this hole, but it does fit if you just give it enough pressure. Um, I don't think it was designed by the camera company. So I'm just gonna push this cable back up in and then let's go ahead and clip it into this. Now since it's under this eave and the rain's gonna be dropping here, it's okay, but on this is the west side and the water's gonna be coming, the wind's gonna be blowing the water up against here. The vulnerable is the top and the back. The back I'm not worried about too much, but the top, so I want to go as high as I can. See, I can rotate it this way or that way. And I'm probably going to point it almost maybe a little bit towards my neighbor's house. All right, so one of the obvious things you might be thinking about while well, your camera's upside down. Well, in software, I can rotate this 180 degrees the image and it'll be fine. So again, I'm just trying to protect the holes in the back. And I'm trying to protect the holes here. So it's under the eave. So I'm going to just push it up as high as I can so the water doesn't get on top. Um, rotate it and the water coming I doubt the water is gonna come all the way hit here and go back into the holes who knows it might okay I'm now opening the app and it's connecting to the camera and as you can see it's upside down so I'm gonna go into settings uh, I think it's under advanced settings you'll see me yeah, there are advanced settings and I can then rotate the image 180 degrees and then it'll be the correct side up I go down to where it says time sync and press on that and then it's going to keep the um, time Updated uh, camera status light. I've turned that off so the moths don't get into it. A uh, timestamp watermark. I like to have that on. I took the logo off, and I like recording sound. All right. Next up, I'm going to go to the motion detection settings, and I usually start around 50, and then uh, figure out where the best place to put it is. Sometimes I'll go to like 10, and then go to 90, and just kind of get an idea. Detection zone. Um, and this one, I started looking at it and I was like, well, you're going to see me adjust the camera here in a second. Because um, on the, the one I have in the front house that does have some of the eave, I basically took away the detection zone where the eave was because there's no reason if there's like a moth that flies up there, there's no reason to basically detect that area. I don't really care what's going on motion-wise at the eave. So you can see I'm starting to move it around, trying to figure out the best place to put it. Um, and I, really when it comes down to it, um, I didn't really need to adjust the detection zone at all because um, the way I'm aiming the camera on this particular one. And then I'm gonna go into, uh, just connect the regular camera and rotate it. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, so as you can see, I'm just walking around, I can see what's actually happening on the phone and it's detecting me. Um, it works pretty well. So what I'll, again, what I'll try to do maybe in about a year from now, if it's still working, is give you an update that it is working. <laughs> and if it's not working, maybe I'll tear it apart and show you the water damage inside. Um, but basically locating under the eave without one of the housings. The housings cost another, I don't know, 15 bucks or so. And again, they don't really protect the front of the camera. They only protect the holes in the back of the camera where audio passes through and maybe heat escapes. So I'm just thinking that way up tight against the eve it's going to work well